Apple is better than Android, at least according to one writer. What's up, Mavericks? I'm Nate, and if you're new here, I bring you quick tech news on the daily. And today's story is either going to make you triggered or it's going to make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. You know who you are based on how you feel. Please consider hitting that like button and subscribe in order to tell that YouTube algorithm that you love our content and we would really appreciate it. Well, first off, today I was bombarded by some amazing articles and I'm not even gonna show you all of them, I'm just gonna hop into a couple of them real quick and just tell you there's more here. I have not, we, we, we don't have time to go over it today, but Amazon's big bet on, a th on Anthropic looks even more important after the OpenAI drama. Uh, we just talked about this the other day, but Anthropic is the company that uh, made Claude, which is, I think, the best, the second best large language model out there with a huge asterisk, depending on what you're trying to use it for, because each model's tuned and trained for different things. Uh, but that article, I, I'm gonna have to get into, I don't know if we'll do a video on it, but it's so good. Um, the next one, Google is reportedly pushing the launch of its Gemini AI to 2024. It's supposed to be this week, and it just got pushed off to next year. Uh, this is following the OpenAI's release just the other day on Friday of uh, ChatGPT Store being pushed off to the new year as well. Uh, fortunate timing for them because of what they're uh, because of OpenAI kind of slowing down the process and having that delay um, due to the board shift and all that information, all that stuff. But uh, this is an, a big one though because this is supposed to be the GPT four. Um, uh, the big competitor. And I know you're thinking, wait, Google already has Bard. Isn't that the GPT-4 competitor? No, that's not the GPT-4 competitor. There's a story there. Again, we're probably gonna have to get to it one of these days here. But today's story, Apple is better than Android, at least according to Joshua Hawkins. Here's the story. I really wanted to ditch my iPhone for the Pixel 8 Pro. Here's why I didn't. Love this article. Now, before I read this, I, this might make some people really mad, and I totally get that. That's okay. Uh, before I read this, I want to say, as an Apple fan, this so perfectly encapsulates how I feel about Apple products, but also my interest in other technology and my willingness to try other technology. I feel like Joshua and I, we should become friends. I need to find this guy. We're probably buddies. But uh, let's let's dig into it. And uh, please, please, let's get in the comments and let's hash this out. If you disagree, get in the comments. Let's hash it out. If you agree, get in the comments and let's hang out. Here we go. Uh, the Pixel 8 Pro is a truly fantastic device. It's packed to the brim with Google's AI features, including some new features that will make taking videos and photos even easier. This is kind of like when someone's telling you, uh, giving you a bunch of compliments before they tell you that they think your food sucks. This is, uh, this is exactly what Josh was doing here. Uh, despite all of the pros though, there are also a lot of cons. Most of my immediate family and friends use iPhones. I don't think I, yeah, I'd maybe highlighted one other piece here. Uh, this, is a, this is a big one for me especially, but uh, I'm thinking of all of the friend groups and all the chat groups that I'm in that are all iPhone users and it's awesome and everything's seamless. And then I have that one group with my colleagues and all of my colleagues have iPhones except for one of them. And I, and I won't go any deeper than that in case one of them watches this video, but it is really frustrating at times. Uh, let's see here. This particular con for the Pixel 8 Pro isn't anything that Google has done wrong. Really nice um, admonishment. Is that the right one? Admonition? I don't know. This is really nice of Joshua to be generous here and, and make sure that everybody who's reading this knows this isn't Google's fault. This is just the reality of the marketplace we live in, right? I trust Apple with my privacy more, though only slightly. Both Google and Apple can be a bit spotty with data and how they leverage it for their own business interests. But I still trust Apple a bit more. Don't get me wrong, I don't buy that Apple doesn't use my data for gain in some way at all. It's a company and user data can make a lot of money, especially for advertisers. However, Apple has always felt a bit more upfront about how it handles data than Google has. 
And while Google offers a, a lot of privacy-centric features on the Pixel 8 Pro and your Google account, I can't help but feel a bit jaded by the way Google handles user data. Not gonna lie. And, and again, you know, nice guy over here. This isn't Pixel 8 Pro's fault, uh, but but I, I'm 100% with you, man, 100% with you. I tried Google's uh, version of the HomePod. I, I've, I've, I've played around with a bunch of tech and uh, definitely feel way more comfortable with Apple um, than I do uh, uh, with Google products in terms of privacy and safety. That being said, I don't really care that much about privacy and safety. The ecosystem feels less fractured. Uh, love this one. Just the ecosystem in general as a as a highlight here I put for you because yes, I love Apple products because of the ecosystem. I love how everything speaks to, speaks to each other. Um, I love how seamless everything is. I love that my wife got a new iPhone and I set it up with her current iPhone and it was just boom, done. It was so incredibly easy. Um, and then when we have all of our products working in tandem and the Apple TV's on and the HomePod's on, everything's playing all at once, it is so seamless and I get a text on my watch and it doesn't, there's no interruptions anywhere, right? Uh, points out the Pixel 8 Pro, this downside. I love what Google's doing with the Pixel 8 Pro, but the fact that I have to choose the Pixel 2, Pixel Watch 2 over any other great Android smartwatches out there if I want to get the full breadth of the features just feels like an overstep. As an Android user, you shouldn't have to choose whether you want to be Samsung or Google. Uh, it should all play nice together. That's one area that Apple reigns supreme, uh, at least in my opinion, because my Apple Watch will always work with iOS and an iPhone. Okay, and then finally, last point, I just like iOS. The last reason that I can't make the swap is just because I really like iOS, especially since Apple has continued to improve it. It's a system that works, and while it doesn't offer all the same customizations that Android offers in the Pixel 8 Pro, I really wish I had those Pixel 8 generative AI wallpapers on my iPhone. It does, it does more than enough to keep me running smoothly. And what I wanna just, that the customization thing, this has been a pain point for Android lovers for a really, really long time. And, you know, even guys like MKBHD, Marcus Brownlee, um, like even, even guys like that, like I can, re I can recall when Apple would get a new feature that it allowed you to do further customization and he'd be like, we've been waiting for this forever. And I know he also likes Apple products, but he's a little more Android sensitive. Um, you know, that kind of stuff bothers some people and it doesn't other people. Like, for me personally, I think customization is cool. I remember having a MySpace page where I had the background colors of my MySpace page were super bright blue and green and I thought it was a really cool combo. But that's probably not best for your the marketability of your website and your social media, right? Like that probably didn't do well for MySpace in the long run, giving all this flexibility and customization, right? Um, you know, and then maybe that's a little bit off track here, but the point is, the customizations have a nice aspect to them, but they're also just a small part, I think, for me, uh, of you know the tech use that I'm getting out of my cell phone. And then finally, this phrase just really, it just hits home for me. Again, warm and fuzzy. iOS just feels like home. And I think I just clicked that link, so I'm gonna go on a cruise. Uh, iOS just feels like home. What a great synopsis of just how I feel. It's a good feeling. iOS makes me feel at home. Josh Hawkins and I must be best friends. Soon, we're gonna be best friends. Well, you know, maybe you didn't like this video, maybe you did like this video, I don't care. That's your. That's up to you. I wanna make content you enjoy, so please comment down below, let me know what you think. Maybe you think that Android is the best and iPhones suck, and uh, you can convince me of your opinions. I would love to engage with you either way in the comments section, Apple or Android. It's a debate that will probably never find a clear solution uh, because the world is too divided in technology, but that also makes it fun. All right, everybody, think different. Stay crazy.